So tonight we are in conversation with EFF leader Julius Malema. We're discussing the party's election manifesto and what it expects to gain from the local government elections. He is talking to our political editor, Mzwandile Mbeje. Mzwai, over to you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Francis. Uh, indeed, as you've correctly said, uh, we are at the EFF studios. Uh, quite interesting, so they've built a very uh, interesting studio. Remember where we are is their new headquarters, the Winnie Mandela, Winnie Matigizola Mandela House headquarters uh, that were opened uh, when they launched their election manifesto on the 26th of September. So clearly they're hoping to uh, do very, very big things. And of course, uh, Francis, uh, you've said uh, I'm joined by uh, the leader of the EFF, uh, Julius Malema, to speak about uh, some of the things really that uh, he spoke about when he unveiled the election manifesto of his party and of course to touch on a number of other issues uh, as obviously uh, he is uh, the national leader so there are some of the pressing issues we really would like uh, to know from him. Uh, Mr Malema, welcome to SAPC and the full view. Thank you, thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Um, just a, a quick one. Um, you delivered your manifesto here um, uh, two weeks ago, yes. or just last week, yes. And then you said a number of things. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, my first question would be quite simple. Um, you've been a party, you've been around for eight years. Yes. And then you are quite known as a party. And then you've contested elections, uh, national and, of course, um, local. Mm -hmm. What do you think... Um, why do you think South Africans this time around would choose you? Well, uh, we're given not so significant mandate, but we did the things that are so big in municipalities that not even big parties uh, could do. We had in championed the insourcing of workers in the Johannesburg municipality, in Tswane, in Nelson Mandela. We have uh, championed uh, service delivery and fought corrupt uh, uh, politicians, removed mayors, e even in councils where we just had a mere four councillors. We all put a motion, persuade other political parties, successful including the ruling party, successfully to remove the corrupt, exposed corruption, and showed the weaknesses where they exist and fought for the improvement of the living conditions of our people. So we have been a party at work. We never said, look, we don't have a, a decisive majority, and therefore let's behave like any other party that comes in, and because it doesn't have numbers, they just draw salaries and withdraw back to their homes. We have been very active uh, in helping uh, communities. Well, are you happy with some of the things that uh, you have done in the past five years, clearly from what you are saying? Yes. Um, I remember very well in 2016 when you were deciding about Johannesburg and then Tswane in terms, and even Nelson Mandela, yes. who to go with um, in terms of coalition. Yes. You sat in Alexandra in the backdrop of Situetla. Yes. Five years later, have you been there? Well, we live in Alexander. Alexander is our home. Uh, you know the EFF uh, councillor, yeah. uh, the PR councillor from Alex. Yeah. When he walks, I went back there with him uh, some other day, where the people, including the kids, were calling him our father. That his name is Mpatel. Yeah. That's how much we are rooted amongst uh, our people. Conditions five years later. Yes. You promised that uh, these conditions whoever you are going into coalition with, yes. so will change those conditions. But you and I sit here, those conditions remain the same. Well, remember, we got destabilized. We went to Elias Mutsualedi uh, informal settlement. We were working on a project to formalize that informal settlement. We opened uh, half of the clinics in Johannesburg, 24 hours, made sure they service our people, insourced the, the workers in the municipality. Straight up, it's an uh, informal settlement, and where they stay is next to a river. You have to find an alternative land for them and resettle them properly. Uh, as we are about to do that, DA had its own internal dynamics, and as a result, the whole arrangement uh, collapsed, uh, which had nothing to do uh, with the EFF. So along the way, 
making you break the promise to the electorate? No, no, we are committed. We made our... No, I'm saying the fact of the matter is that uh, that promise you made sitting there mm -hmm. so has not been fulfilled five years later. No, we are no longer in government. Yeah. We could only fulfill it once the people that we prefer to be in government were there. All these things I'm accounting to is because we had uh, the preferred uh, parties in government which depended on our vote uh, to succeed. And when that arrangement collapsed, we couldn't implement because you need the power uh, to do that. So we didn't sell out or betray the mandate our people uh, gave to us. It was unfortunate uh, turn of events where the government that we had influence on collapsed because of the internal dynamics of the DA. Do you regret your decision to, for going to bed with the DA? No, 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 no. We never went into bed in the DA. Well, we put the DA uh, in power yeah. and we could influence it uh, uh, from behind. Let's take, for instance, uh, Mzwandile. There is no DA policy to in-source workers. There is no such a policy. Mm -hmm. It's an EFF policy. There is no DA policy to open clinics in every ward and 24 hours. It's an EFF uh, policy. So where we had influenced uh, the decision of who becomes government, mm -hmm. we were able to also influence the position. So I'm saying to you, had the DA not have internal racist dynamics and were able to continue uh, with the type of people we were supporting uh, in those local municipalities, everything else would have been fulfilled. You know, you, you, you ended up singing in inverted commas praises for Hemen Mashaba, uh, who was the mayor. Yes. But remember, before he took over, you had vowed uh, never to work with him because you basically blended him a right winger, yes. um, given his, obviously, his history. Yes. So somehow, this was the person you relied on, this was the person who was pushing the, your problem. No, we didn't rely on. This was, well, the, to, 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 this, to this, this was the person who was prepared to listen to us. Remember, I mean, didn't know politics. So he had to sing uh, from the book that we gave him. So, uh, and uh, we even uh, made him to believe that he is this uh, popular leader who, who knows uh, politics. But his politics and grassroots politics, remember, Herman is a businessman. Yeah. He's an elitist. He has got no idea what was going on on the ground. Yeah. So when we realized that this is the guy who's prepared to listen uh, to the EFF and spend most of his time with the EFF leadership, even begged us to send some of the leaders of the EFF into his government because the EFF had cream de la cream. When he sat with them, he realized this was a visionary leadership. So it was the other way around. We did not depend on him, and he depended on us. And the DA realized that this guy was pursuing the EFF policy. Okay. Because sometimes for you to be a leader, yeah. you don't have to be in front. Yeah. You can lead from behind. And that's so, what we did. So you basically, you basically were in charge of Twanspe. We were in charge. That's exactly what happened. That's why the policy that we advocated for so, was the EFF policy. Sure, you were in charge of Joburg. Yeah. One of the complaints that uh, people have been having about Joburg is that there's been lack of service delivery. In fact, as you and I sit here, there's no electricity. So do you then take responsibility for the potholes that are around the city, for the, for the no street lighting, for the grass, um, so for basically lack of service delivery because you were in charge, are you prepared to take that responsibility? No, but we're talking past tense. You can't talk past tense and then want us to take responsibility for the present tense. Yeah. So when we were in charge, Mashaba was the most popular person. Mashaba was the most loved person because he implemented the EFF policy. When we uh, lost influence in Johannesburg, mm. everything deteriorated because the crooks came back and then took over the municipality and gave it the old direction, which is um, a self-enrichment. Uh, so that's where everything else uh, went wrong. Mzwandile, me and you sitting here, we should ask ourselves a question. 
Why is the ANC having a problem with opening clinics 24 hours, as if people get sick only during the day? Why is the ANC having a problem in sourcing security guards and cleaners who should work for the municipality and be available 24 hours? Mm. So I'm saying to you uh, that when we were, and it is undisputed fact, actually, if you play back during mm. that time of mm. Mashaba, he was the most popular guy because he held the most popular policy of the EFF. Are you scared of him now that he's contesting as a... He's a political non-starter. But you, you have just said he was popular, so clearly... Because he carried the EFF popular policy. And then so... he over-exaggerated his self-importance and his popularity. Yeah. I will never be threatened by Mashaba. Okay. Neither am I be threatened by the ANC or the DA. So Mashaba is not an issue to the EFF. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. You were in Tabazimbi on Sunday? Yes. On Sunday? Yes. Uh, there you are part of government no in, in, in the council we are not no but you you have the word there in the in the in, in the in the in the in the popo that's what i'm talking about no in the popo we've yes, got yes, some yes, words yes, but yes. not in tabazim tabazim yes. is no, under sekukone yeah but tabazim yes. is under coalition yes and then that coalition is of tabazimbi residents association yes. with the da yes. we are not part of that yes yes okay in the word that you have, you promised that you build, build boreholes and all those things. In your word, have you in, done that? In Tabazimbi? No, no, no. In, in your word, in, in the bubble, the one that you No, that but you my word, my, yeah. my, my word is under the EFF in yeah. Burin yeah. Are you happy with delivery then? Very happy. There is an informal settlement that we gave a, a borehole uh, yeah. called Juju Valley uh, without government intervention. Yeah. There is the word next to mine, uh, called Ward 10, I don't know what it's called now, in Blood River, we gave them the water ourselves uh, without uh, uh, the uh, government uh, uh, intervention, mm -hmm. where we, as the EFF lead the ward, we have always made sure that we service our people. Uh, moving on to, to, your, to your manifesto, yes. uh, you speak about very interesting things that you will do uh, should you be granted power. Uh, even speaking about sorting out schools, yes. my information is that schools are a competence of national and provincial government, but these are local government elections. How are you going to deal with that? My school, where I'm, I went for high school, yeah. I went to demolish the toilets and put new toilets because I've adopted that school. Yeah. So what stops the EFF municipality from adopting the schools in that municipality and then put the infrastructure? We are not interfering with the curriculum and the content and the management of the school. We just want to, we're adopting it and make it uh, uh, to have proper infrastructure. Why would, when Patrice Muzibe adopt a school or an Oppenheim or any rich person and say, I want to give you facilities, they don't say no, but that is the forte of government and not individuals. It can't be, there's no uh, uh, contestation about who's in charge, but all we're saying, we're not going to have a situation where there is a school with a pit toilet in our municipality. And uh, we're not saying we're taking over the running of the school. Mm -hmm. We're saying we're going to put an infrastructure in that school. I've done it. And if you don't believe it, send the SABC tomorrow to Mutlaganeng High School. Yeah. Demolished old schools which were not in good condition, build new proper uh, uh, toilets uh, uh, for the students there. And I had that conversation with the MEC uh, uh, of education in Limpopo. It was permissible. We're not taking over the running of the school. We are going to make sure that the school um, has got a proper infrastructure. I was saying to the deputy president of uh, uh, the EFF, we need to adopt five schools in the Eastern Cape, which have got uh, pit toilets. We don't have to be a municipality there. Put a big septic tank. I'm a farmer. I operate in areas where there's no uh, sewer system. I've built personally, uh, uh, you know, uh, septic tanks and toilets. So let's do that for schools and make sure that we drill boreholes, make sure the kids have got a proper flushing toilet. We don't require anyone's permission to do that. Sure. No, I think it's, it's pretty yes. clear uh, from what you are saying. Yes. 
maybe talking, still talking about uh, housing and building. Yes. <laughs> One of the things you said was that uh, should you take over here in Johannesburg, you are going to build uh, RDP houses in Sentin. Yes. So perhaps. Are you going to go for the golf courses or, or how, <laughs> you know, how exactly? You know, RDP house means was the proper mm. English word for it. It mm. was called RDP houses because they emerged from that RDP program. Mm. But it's low income houses, houses, houses. Yeah. So you can have mixed housing in Santen. There are a lot of old buildings that exist uh, in Santen. Actually, in Santen, Muzwandile, to be honest, there are uh, uh, RDP houses. Every house in Santen has got an RDP house called a uh, staff quarters. That's okay. where they put the poor. So why do they have a problem now when we're saying the poor must not stay in your backyard? We're going to bring them closer to where they work. So they are not golf courses. As you enter um, um, uh, Hyde Park, the opposite of uh, your competitor stations, uh, stations. There are buildings there that you can see. These buildings, we can take them and convert them into affordable housing, including uh, low-income housing and mixed residential areas. I hate this thing that these people are saying. There must always be, and that's what should be the policy of South Africa, integrated human settlement. There shouldn't be settlement for the poor and settlement for the rich. Because you know what it means when it says settlement for the poor. It means black. Uh, and settlement for the rich, it means white. Then we are perpetuating the special development program of apartheid, which is of dividing our people on the basis of color. But now you are not using the color. You use money to continue the same thing of color division. So we will take buildings in Santen, convert them into affordable housing, into uh, low-income uh, housing, into free housing uh, for our people. Take from who? Those buildings in Santen, who are you taking them from? Any building that we can see that this building is not being used effectively, we'll expropriate it. It doesn't matter whether it is in the private hands or not. Remember, the policy of the EFF is expropriation of land uh, without compensation. Mm. We are going to expropriate buildings that are not being used um, e effectively uh, in Santen and in the whole of Johannesburg, including here in this inner city. But you'll face a lot of lawsuits uh, going to court let's, action. Let, let's try it. Let, mm. let's, let's try it. Let, let mm. the judge sit there and say to us, we cannot expropriate a building that is going to be used for public purpose and public interest. It's a very interesting uh, legal uh, challenge that we are ready to take on. Remember, the EFF government and municipality mm. is going to be in serious uh, legal battles with a lot of people. Why? Mm. It is a radical policy. There is no way uh, uh, the right-wingers and those who want to hold on into benefits of apartheid will not challenge the policy of the EFF. You also spoke about buildings here in the CBD, Absolutely. Uh, basically saying those hijacked buildings, so you'll make sure that you get them. In fact, you were very careful um, uh, to, to say from criminals. Yes. Um, I think generally, and I'm, I'm very yes. clear on this, I'm saying generally, yes. many of these buildings are hijacked by foreigners. And you are very strong as well as EFF on the social network. Yes. And then, then there's this perception. You are a politician. You know yeah. that perception really matters. Mm -hmm. There's this perception of saying the EFF tends to favor the foreigners more than the locals. And I'll tell you why I'm saying yes. this. When you spoke about the, the, these buildings, so you shied away from perhaps calling it what it is. Uh, of course, we are not using any science. Yes. So. And there are many people who are saying, actually, we like what the EFF is doing, but it's prioritizing for foreigners. So as a result, they are not getting my vote. So what do you say to that? No, 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 no. You see, if a Nigerian sells drugs, ne? I don't care if he's a Nigerian. He's a drug lord. He's a criminal. So why should I put a, a nationality over the head of a criminal? A criminal it's a criminal. I was yeah. not careful about it. It is what it is. I'm not going to label people according to countries.
Because if we were to use science, I'm happy you admitted you're not using science because yeah. there is no one who can produce a scientific report that says these buildings are hijacked uh, by foreigners. Um, but scientifically, there could be a proof that we can put on the table that the people who are raping women, the people who are uh, 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 raping children and gogos, the people who are committing the most dangerous crimes in this country are South Africans. It's no, there is no way where a, a, a proof can be produced that the hardcore criminals that are in jail, convicted, remember you are a criminal once convicted by mm. the neutral court of law, mm. majority of them are South Africans themselves. Now we are told the buildings are hijacked by foreigners. We are not being given anything that demonstrates that buildings are hijacked by foreigners. We don't care whether you are a foreigner or not. As long as you've got no papers of this building, you will not own it, will take it as a municipality, will redevelop it, and give it to our people. Not only hijacked buildings, they are a lot of abandoned uh, buildings. You know, we once found a building here in, in, in Jobek, hijacked mm -hmm. where, during Mashaba's ear. When we followed up on that building, the building was owned by a bank of Mozambique, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the banks, uh, I'm not sure about the name, but one of the banks that got liquidated in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So meaning, there is no owner. A capable municipality should be have the capacity to say, but this building is, is one of my biggest clients. All of a sudden, it's no longer paying rates and taxes. After six months, you have to zoom in there and check what's wrong. Mm -hmm. You find the building is abandoned. We expropriate it. We pay those monies. Uh, 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 if we want to auction it, we auction it. But under the EFF government, we'll convert it into the uh, ownership of uh, the municipality and convert it into uh, people's housing. Let's go uh, more towards uh, the, the coalitions, uh, remember. Yes. Um, you've you've tested, tasted that. Yes. Um, who is it that you will simply not go into coalition with? I know you're calling it differently. You don't want to bind yourself. No, now we're going into coalition. Oh, right. Uh, no. We are going in straight. So, so yeah. one thing that you need to now prepare yourself is that there's going to be one or two mayors if there's a coalition yeah. in this Houting metros. So we're going to have mayors, executive mayors of the EFF, mm. and we're going to go into a coalition. Look, we will engage with anyone who wants to work with the EFF, who allows the EFF to lead, and who is ready to make sure that radical programs are being implemented. We want to expropriate buildings in Captain Park. Are you ready? Are you willing to give the EFF that power, work with them? expropriate abandoned and hijacked buildings in Captain Park, in Sunnyside, in Hillbrook, and convert those into people's housing so that our people can be closer to where they work and where the facilities are. Would you work with uh, Freedom Front Plus? Well, it's not a preferred choice, but let's hear them. So the, the DA, clearly, you would? Well, we, we, we will, it's a community uh, program. It's not necessarily about ideology yeah. and all manner of things. It's about those that can give the EFF an immediate mandate. The priority now is the EFF. Anyone who wants to talk to us yeah. must say, we are giving you this municipality and you are giving us this municipality. Uh, so, Gamina, Gawen. But the Coalitions have proven to be very unstable. As a result, the people that you're fighting for tend to suffer. So in that situation, do you, are you comfortable that uh, we may go through that, or perhaps as going forward, we may have to relook at our electoral situation? Well, our arrangement is different. All we're saying to those we engage with, yeah. we give you the municipality. We don't co-govern with you. We're going to vote for you to be the executive of Johannesburg. And then you run municipality on your own. And then we become the legislature yeah. to hold you accountable. And then you do the same with us in Tswani. You vote the EFF full executive in Tswani. And then you become the legislature of Tswani and hold the EFF uh, accountable. Not those things of sharing MMCs and those things, those types, no. Yeah, yeah. 
We give you power to run, and then you give us power uh, to run, and let's hold each other accountable. We don't want the mayor of the EFF to preside over an MMC yeah. of COPE. Uh, no, they, if, they, if we are going with COPE, COPE will go into the legislature, and we'll go into the executive, and we'll give COPE the municipality where, where we've got control, where we can give them our vote, and they take over, and we take the legislature to hold one another accountable. As a fairly new party, um, assuming uh, you win, let's say, the majority of municipalities in Which the country. Which we are going to win, yeah. So do you have personnel to run them? Yeah, absolutely. Committed, committed absolutely. personnel? Absolutely. You know who is that personnel? Yes, I South want Africans. to know. South Africans. Yes. South Africans. We are not mm. going to prioritize people who wear the beret and without qualification make them heads of technical services. Mm. We are going to hire competent South Africans, majority of which have gone to school and they are loyal to this country and to its constitution. Mm. Even if they are members of the EFF, if they are deserving, they will be hired. In the EFF manifesto, you must go and read it. Yeah. We yeah. say, any councillor who says he's going to save, is not going to save the people because they did not vote for the EFF, yeah. that councillor will be punished. It's a misconduct. When we are government, we are not a government of the EFF. We are a government of the people of Johannesburg. We are the government of the people of Polokwane. Yeah. ANC, DA alike, we will service them. And if they are competent, they are prepared to work for the government uh, that is led by the EFF, they will follow the process, and if they pass, we'll hire them. You have specifically uh, said Etegwin is up for grabs. In fact, you, are, you are taking Etegwin. Yes. Why are you so confident? The ANC about, is in uh, disarray. Mm. The ANC is in disarray. They destroyed that woman who was uh, working for them there mm. in Etegwin. Yeah. And as a result, there is no center that holds uh, in uh, Etegwin. So the EFF actually gave us shocking results uh, in 2019 in Etegwin. Yeah. When the SG of the EFF kept on updating me with the numbers and said, now the next target is, I thought he lost his mind. Yeah. At that time, he was not... Uh, uh, the SG. But we, we, we realized then that Etequini, and in particular the whole of KwaZulu Natal, it's a home of uh, the, the EFF. You know what's happening now, Zwai? Yeah. The, the same attitude we're getting in 2013 when people were saying, hey, there's no EFF this side, come and establish. Yeah. We're getting that attitude in KwaZulu Natal, where people say, guys, we can't see you anywhere here. I'm in this side. This is why I stay. Please, these are my contacts. Call me. Come this side. The excitement in KZN to receive the EFF is overwhelming. Are you capitalizing on the disgruntlement that relates to uh, the former president? Because you would seen, I mean, you, you, you yourself yesterday at the JSC spoke about uh, the country banning. Uh, yes. because of what had happened to the former president. Yes. Are you capitalizing on the fact that uh, perhaps some of the members or supporters of the ANC are not happy uh, because of their internal challenges? Is that what you are using? Zuma was recording a, a video yesterday for the ANC, promoting the ANC. For sure, they will release it very soon. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, so why would I do that? I have nothing to do with Zuma. Mm. Zuma is a member of the ANC. Zuma, for sure, they will unleash him very soon to go and campaign for them. So I've got nothing to do with Zuma and what Zuma does. Mm. The people of KwaZulu-Natal want services. The people of KwaZulu-Natal, they are hungry. We mm. saw them during uh, the protest in July mm. that these people are calling for a caring government to come mm. and, and, and look after them. So. I have nothing to do with Zuma. Zuma is no longer part of my politics. Mm. It's done. You know, when a person goes on pension, allow him to go uh, and rest. The, the only difference is that Zuma doesn't know when to stop mm. because he must accept he's a pension. Mm. Now he's busy recording uh, uh, videos. He's inviting us back into his life. Mm. We have not even commented about his parole and all that. Once he comes back and does politics, then he's going to invite us in, back into his life when we have taken a conscious decision to walk away from Zuma and allow him 
mm -hmm. uh, to rest as an old man. He must choose if he still wants to be an activist or he wants to be a pension. Mm -hmm. If he wants to come back, then he will find us ready uh, for him. But that is not what we are here for. We are here in Natal to make sure that our people uh, get services. And we take no advantage of the situation of Zuma. I'm saying to you, we got numbers in Natal before Zuma went to jail. Kwasul mm. Natal was one of the biggest feeders mm. of the EFF in 2019. And there was no Zuma issue, and there was no Zuma in jail. Yeah. No, I, I think it's fair. Yeah. I, I, I remember that from 70,000, you increased to around 300,000, which I think was phenomenal. Yes. Um, you are the most visible party as, as, as the campaigns uh, are heating up. Yes. Where do you get the money to put all the posters from? You know because, why? Mm -hmm. um, um, this one thing called, which I learned, called uh, cash flow management. You mm. ought to know with the little resources you have, yeah. which one do I invest where? Mm. Um, and then from there, all the little money we get from parliament, we're going to get another money, by the way, now. This is October, so mm. they give us money quarterly. Yeah. So we see how we manage that money and where do we channel it. That's number one. Number two, mm. we've got a very good reputation with our creditors. Mm. The people who do posters for EFF, there is a, 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 an Indian doctor, we call him a good doctor in a KZN. Mm. He's able to give the EFF a credit of almost uh, 50 million. Mm. And he knows we're going to services. We, since 2014, we were working with him. We've never faltered him. We, he gave us that. We went to the bank between 2014 and 2019 mm. to take a loan to pay him uh, so that we can now owe an institution. Mm. And then we were paying uh, mm. the bank. Even now, he's continuing to produce our posters. We haven't paid him. We're busy with the bank to get the loan mm. uh, so that we can not pay him, put a little bit here, Put a little bit here, put a little bit there, mm. and then with the TV advert and media advertising, you go to a company uh, that has got a media buy-in, you talk to them, put a little bit there, then they buy the space for you, you advertise. Remember, we are young. Mm. We know the street. So we don't have to have money. We have to know the street and know who to talk to. Hey, my bra, we'll see you, man. Give us six months. We'll sort you out. That brings me to my next question. Yes. But you haven't declared that. I know that you said it's No, it's credit. not a donation. You must credit. differentiate between yeah. credit and donation. It's not a donation. All right. But, but that, it, all of that, let's yeah. say the bank give us money, right? Yes. It will be in the statement of the EFF. Yeah. And then when the financial year ends, remember throughout the year you declare? Yes. When the financial year ends, you take your audited financial statement, you hand it over to the IEC. And then they will see for themselves why none of these crooks, including the South African media, has ever said the EFF since it got into this parliament, receiving the government money, we've always received a clean audit. Mm. And remember, when we hand over our books in parliament, we hand them over to ANC employees mm. who look at those books 15 times. They couldn't find anything. Even now with the IEC, we are going to give them the books. And we have said, any time they can come and open those books, they will never find anything. Mm. Let's take the, the billboards. The people who own billboard spaces are young people. We didn't, uh, young black people. Mm. We, everywhere we go, in your area, please, chief, check who owns the billboards there. Talk to them. Yeah. They give you quotation. We pay production. And then we ask that we pay over a period of time. Uh, the rental of the space. Uh, maybe let's also move to other issues um, yes. um, in the country. Um, <clears throat> you have been sitting at the JC um, even as we are speaking now, so you just walked out from there. Yes. Um, uh, looking at the, choosing the judges. <laughs> and yesterday there was a short list uh, from, the, from the presidency about who is going to be the next Chief Justice. And I think we have about eight names, if I'm, yeah. if I'm correct. Um, among them are the, the, the Deputy Chief Justice, um, uh, Judge Lope, Busim Mkwebane. As a political party, who 
are you supporting in that list? Remember, the Chief Justice was going to come from that list. Yes. As a political party, who are you supporting? That? Judge Tope. The is I think in that list is the highly qualified, mm. the best legal brain, a man of integrity and honor. This thing that they are talking about, Judge Tope, it's nonsense. Go and listen to the interview yesterday we conducted with one of the judges there mm -hmm. who said, we were told when we were in the SCA that when you've got a matter, you must not discuss it with other judges. Mm -hmm. But she says, I was, and the SABC must play that because that is Judge Tropper's charge. Mm -hmm. And the lady says, when I was in the lift, two other judges who were with me on the matter were discussing which direction are they going to take. On that matter, I closed my ears because the rule is that I must not uh, discuss this matter with anyone. Mm -hmm. Why am I bringing this? Yeah. That which Trope did is a general practice in the judiciary. They talk about cases. Mm. It was Trope was not the first one to talk about uh, cases. So Trope, yeah. it's a man of integrity, highly qualified, presided over the most difficult division of the judiciary called the Western Cape. Not only difficult, the most racist with racist government. Yet the man survived. They hate him for that because Tlope doesn't play golf at a Leopard Creek in Pumalang. And we know who owns the Leopard Creek in Pumalang, where all judges go and play uh, uh, golf. So Tlope is not captured uh, by the white monopoly capital. The owners of the economy, every time they've got a case, when you talk to them, they don't say, what are the facts? The first question they ask is, who's the judge? Because they know they've got connection with those judges. So Trope is hated for that. For that. Sitembe le guwe. How can that be a charge? Sitembe le guwe. But I guess the That's context. That's how they speak. I guess the context, and you'd remember what may have been happening at the time when I think the former president uh, was facing the difficulties then. Yes. So I think we also must bring the context. So if those judges felt uh, it was the undue pressure given what was happening, and given that at some point he'd been rumored that he was going to be the next chief justice. So don't you think perhaps there? Mm -mm, he said what they didn't like. If he had said to them what they wanted to hear and what they were going to do uh, on the former president, they wouldn't have reported him. So uh, uh, the story here, which is what all of us must ask. Me, I'm not scared of this mm. uh, uh, white capitalist who want to tell us how to think. The story is... Do judges speak amongst themselves about issues? The answer is yes. Was proper what he did? The first thing, or was it unique? Was it unheard of? Mm. The answer is no. Judges during tea break, they don't miss tea break. They all meet there and they discuss matters. So Trope is not the first one. Trope is highly qualified. Some of these people who are touted, I don't want to call their names, they only have B proc for law and think they are the best lawyers. So Let the ANC be the first one to destroy an African child with such potential. Even in Parliament, we will never vote with them to, to impeach Trump. We will never do it. There's nothing wrong Trump did. Mm. Nothing wrong. Yes, we, even you, when you live here, you're going to discuss stories where there, you are an independent editor, yeah. we're told. But you're going to talk stories when you go back there. That's your job. We talk politics here. You talk stories. Judges talk about matters that are before them. Yeah. And an independent judge who knows his or her mandate yeah. will never regard any trope. Whose trope is not holding a gun, is not saying if you don't do this, these are the consequences. He's expressing his view. Why should you be scared? Go and listen to the fact and make a decision based on what you think are the facts before you and what the law says. Interestingly, in that panel, there is also the public protector, who is also facing some sort of impeachment processes. Yeah. Um, in the event Trump doesn't make it, would you support uh, the public protector? No, I think um, of the people who are there, mm -hmm. she's uh, very junior. Remember, in okay. the judiciary, seniority is very important. Okay. And uh, if we want to keep the integrity of the judiciary, mm -hmm. we must not do away uh, with, the, with the story of... Uh, a, 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 a seniority.
Uh, Mr. Malema leads a party which is fairly young, and uh, clearly there's a lot of uh, future ahead of you. Yep. But you are already in your second term, and I know you have no, no terms. Yeah. Um, where is Julius Malema 2025? Well, my intention is to live when I'm 55. Because remember, I came into this thing when I was nine. Mm. Um, it's a personal view where uh, the comrades can engage about it. But I'm not here uh, to stay forever. Um, um, I want my kids to have a life of their own. Yeah. Uh, I want my family to have a life of their own. And for as long as I'm where I am, uh, there will always be Julius Malema's children, Julius Malema's wife. Uh, she can't do anything because uh, uh, someone uh, will be watching her. But perhaps if I live at 55, like Clarence Makwetu, and go and die in my farm. Okay, before that, you've said publicly, in fact, you were telling the media to say, we will have to go to archives. You said, at some point, you'll be the president of this country. You are 40, mm -hmm. and then, which means in 15 years, you have 15 years in politics. So would you have achieved that dream? Well, uh, if the people of South Africa want me to be the president of South Africa, they would elect me, and I will accept that responsibility. But the other question which you are not asking is yep. whether, the, if when the second term finishes, yes. what happens? Will I, be, I will be available. If the EFF nominates me to be its president, for the third, for the fourth, for the fifth time, I'll be available until I go uh, to retirement uh, if they want me. Mm -hmm. There's no term limit, and I'm not going to be uh, defining terms according to the colonial imperialist definitions of terms. Mm -hmm. uh, Fidel led Ca uh, Cuba for so many years, and he died a revolutionary. We never said because Fidel did, didn't lead only for two terms, he was reactionary. Our terms, as the leftist and as progressive forces will never be defined by imperialists. No one has ever asked here in South Africa, when is Bladen Zimande leaving? Mm -hmm. He has been the GS of the Communist Party forever, until he even resolved his skin crisis. He's still there. He came with a skin crisis and even resolved it while sitting as a GS. OK. Looking at the African politics, um, most of the problems that we have seen perhaps developing in countries is leaders who have led for too long. Mm. Somehow, they can't let go. So are you in that mode where you say, as long as, and they actually use the, the exact terminology, as long as people want me, whilst they know that they actually engineer that. So are you not worried that you may be seen as, well, here is another African leader in the making? No, I'm an African of, leader. Of course, I am of African course you are an African leader. leader. And I'm very but, proud to be an African But you know the context I'm talking about. I will about. never be defined by you know, Europeans. You know the context I'm talking about. Well, uh, we were very proud of Muammar Gaddafi. We were very proud of the work Muammar Gaddafi did. Uh, we were very proud of uh, President Mugabe. We were proud of what he did. But leaders must learn to let go. You must not be a leader that says, Nzo Puma Ngepokis. No, I'm not that type of a leader. Mm -hmm. um, when the time is right, I will leave. I said to you, when I'm 55, I'm leaving. Whether uh, uh, there is a president of South Africa or the EFF, it's immaterial. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I've, 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 I've done so many things at a very early age. Yes. And uh, I lived a life of a 60-year-old mm. when I was 30, 35, mm. where a young man wakes up tomorrow, he doesn't even have a bed to sleep on. Yeah. And he had to wake up on his own and start afresh. So there's nothing I haven't seen. Uh, so uh, I'm happy. And I'm happy with the developments of the EFF. And mm. even if I leave, I'll leave it in very good hands. Um, 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 all of this we're mm. doing for generations okay. to come. Uh, just before I, I, I actually forget, because yeah. uh, very soon <laughs> uh, our time yeah. will, will, will end. Um, on a couple of days ago, yeah. there was a pledge, electoral pledge, uh, where parties were signing uh, how to conduct themselves during this election. The EFF sent no one there. Yeah. 
So are you going to be bound by that? Are you rejecting that? So what was the reason? That was an event. Yes. It's not a pledge. There's a difference but, between an event but and a pledge. That's public that, demonstration. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. It's a waste of money. They okay. wasted they that's wasted money in oh. Santen uh, Convention Center doing the same thing. This is mm. the second one they are doing. Yeah. Please do not invite us to wasteful expenditure. I don't need the speakers and, and, and food for me to sign a pledge. You can bring it anywhere on my campaign trail and say, yes, the IEC official, Mr. Malema, they are looking for you. I will sign it. As a registered political party, yeah. I'm abide by the Electoral Act and its code of conduct and the Constitution of the Republic. The same type of Zimbi you are talking about, yeah. I made that speech there. Yeah. And I said, we don't want violence. We want compliance with the Electoral Act of the, of the IEC. Although we have our own doubts on the IEC, mm -hmm. we know it's another branch of the ANC, but they carry a constitutional mandate and we should respect that. Is that, is that not a precursor to when you're losing? You've just said... No, is... we've always lost in their hands, but we've never trusted them. We've never trusted them. Mm -hmm. we've, we've always known that the ele electoral officers in the voting stations, including the IEC staff, are members of SATU, who by extension, they are members of the ANC by mm. virtue of being an affiliate of COSAT, which is in alliance with the ANC. Mm. You, you know, in my voting station, a, a deputy chairperson of the ANC at some point was an electoral officer. Mm. I had to go and vote in that station, welcomed by her, a mm. member of the ANC, a mm. leader of the ANC. So we know who they are, mm. but one day, the day will come where they will never undermine the will of the people. They can do this crooked arrangement of theirs, mm. but the interest of the people one day will prevail. Just, just a quick one. Uh, we, yeah. We're really sure. running out of time sure. now. Sure. Um, let me ask you about uh, the, the, the Western Cape. There's a, a referendum being brewed somehow. Sure. Very intense seconds. Are you supporting that referendum for the Western Cape to secede? Or you looking at there is no country? referendum that is we supporting that is going to take place, and there is no uh, Western Cape that is going to be CCD. Western Cape belongs here. That is the place they used to enter this uh, colonial list, and their ancestors to come and undermine us here. Mm -hmm. When we take off South Africa, we're taking Western Cape and the whole of Africa. The discussion now is on how do we unite Africa, not how do we further divide. Africa mm. through imaginary and artificial borders. Mm. We are now wrapping up. Sure. The municipalities that we are speaking about, I want you to put your head on the block. Yeah. Um, the big one, the big metros, which one are you taking or which one are you definitely making sure you are the majority part? Jobek, Tswane, Egurleni, Etegwini, we're taking. We're not playing games. And the whole of Khautim, by the way, because remember, counting was gone. Yeah. It only survived through some few increase of votes in, mm. in Igurlane. So our Siangoba rally, Tselatupa rally, is going to Igurlane mm. because that's where we want to undermine the ANC in Gauteng, and we are going to take over uh, these big metros in Gauteng. I said to you, and I'm saying to mm. the viewers at home, yeah. start practicing to have an executive mayor of the EFF. Well, on that note, Mr. Malema, so we will end uh, this uh, conversation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So I hope uh, as uh, the election campaign continues, we'll be able to time in again, uh, check up with you to check uh, what's happening. Thank you. So there was uh, the leader of the EFF, uh, Julius Malema, in conversation uh, with us uh, to look at a number of issues, election related, of course, but of course, and also the issues around uh, uh, politics. Uh, we've heard that he says at 55, he's exiting. So we'll be here to ask him <laughs> if he doesn't. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mzwandile Mbeje, our political editor there in conversation with the EFF leader, saying that they will sweep Al Gauteng. Tomorrow he will be in conversation with DA leader John Steenhuizen on their manifesto, and on Thursday he will be speaking to the IFP leader Velenkosi uh, Khlabisa. And all those interviews will be brought to you here on The Full View. All right, let's take a quick look at the weather.